Investors are piling into large cap REITs, but what they might not be noticing is that small cap REITs are doing even better. Here to talk about the sector is Index IQ CEO Adam Patty. Welcome, Adam. Thanks for having me. All right, your roof, that's ticker R O O F, that's a small cap real estate ETF. It's up around 40% this year. That's double the IYR, which is the large cap ETF, which is not yours. What's going on there? Well, it, the small cap segment of the REIT market is, is, under, is underserved. It's underserved by investors. They're kind of the hidden gems in the marketplace. When, when typically when people have been buying REITs, they're buying IYR, they're buying VNQ, these large cap REIT ETFs that are largely holding the same securities, the Simon Property Groups, the Vernados, pushing the price of those, of those securities higher, reducing their dividend yields and incre increasing their volatility. The, the small cap segment really is, is, is hidden from the marketplace. And what we found is that that portfolio of smaller companies typically is, runs at a 20 to 30 percent discount in valuation to the large caps, has about double the, double the dividend yield, and of course the performance has been about double as well. Well, right now I'm seeing the yield on the roof around 5 percent. How do you select the stocks on the roof? Which index are you following? Uh, well, it's our index. Index IQ develops all of our own indexes, fully transparent, rules-based indexes. Um, it's a very simple methodology. We look at the top, the bottom 10% of the U.S. REIT marketplace. We carve out securities that don't trade a lot. We have trading volume and uh, restrictions on the index. Um, and then we, we package that together. So it's around 42 uh, REITs that meet our criteria, and it's market cap weighted. Now, another... Uh ETF of yours that's doing extremely well is your, your QAI. This is, this is your largest ETF out there. It deals with hedge funds. It's actually, it's, it's like a hedge fund of its own. Why is this getting so much traction lately? Well, uh, four years of uh, live history have certainly helped. It's outperformed the HFRI fund of funds index over that time period. It's really the only way for ETF investors to get liquid exposure to hedge fund-like risk return patterns without investing in hedge funds. Um, it's, it's a great product for, for now when investors are fearful of the interest rate environment. It's a great fixed income alternative because it keeps your volatility profile similar to that of a fixed income instrument, but it'll do better than fixed income in a rising rate environment. And another product of yours is the MNA. This is an ETF which deals with mergers and acquisitions. Uh, what kind of flows are you seeing onto this? Well, we're seeing nice flows. We're seeing a spike in trading volume. Um, you know, it's about time. And merger arbitrage has not been the, the, the strategy that's been most in favor over the last several years. I mean, we've all expected the two or three trillion in cash on corporate balance sheets to come off and start acquiring companies. It looked like it was starting uh, earlier this year. And I think investors are starting to really get back into the strategy. And M&A is really the only way to play that in ETF structure. Well, Index IQ recently crossed the billion dollar in assets, Mark. So when do you get acquired? Because you know <laughs> it's hard raising those kind of assets. There's not that many ETF companies out there. Well, we're, we're focused on building a, a large, important business. We've got a long way to go, but uh, we hope that the hardest part is, is behind us in terms of the market environment and getting to that first billion, and we're eager to just keep growing. The first billion's the easy part. <laughs> it's <a> smooth sailing, <laughs> right? Thanks for coming. Thanks a lot. Thank you for watching the street.